So here's a little walkthrough of the uh, current state of the game. This is all mostly uh, borrowed assets and uh, Google image uh, search background, um, but I feel like it sort of gets the uh, point across of uh, what it would look like. Uh, first off, uh, got the uh, basic features of being able to change the resolution and switch from full screen. There's a loading and saving mechanism. Uh, right now it's pretty much just the uh, label of the, when the uh, save was made, but eventually could have the, uh, the actual uh, point in the game that it is as well. And uh, right now there's just the single uh, campaign available. So eventually I, I was thinking that these could be everything from randomly generated to uh, more puzzle-based uh, scenarios depending upon the actual code that underlines the campaign, but right now it's just the uh, tutorial. So this is uh, something else that uh, eventually would be a little expanded, just more uh, actual uh, story and less about you know how the uh, UI works. Also, uh, there's sort of a mechanism that could allow different pictures for the different characters and the uh, settings that could, you know, potentially affect the uh, font color and uh, other uh, visuals of the presentation. So just uh, getting through, mostly uh, just explaining what this tutorial is going to be doing. Um, so this next uh, screen is going to be probably the most complicated one. I think there's a lot of different ways that I could actually go to make this a little bit more intuitive, but I wanted to sort of get the, the core functionality just in a way that could be manipulated, especially on a phone screen, and uh, worry about actually making it more intuitive later. Uh, let's see, I'll actually walk through these so make it a little clearer. Uh, the other thing is, as a, a tutorial, uh, it would probably make more sense to uh, make this sort of text actually appear in line on the screens that it's applying to, but this is just basically to get the functionality in line. So this is the campaign map. So this is the cities that the player and the opponent are going to be fighting over. There's a choice to buy intel, which is sort of the key uh, gimmick of the game, and, uh, and options, which is basically the save, load, and set, same setting screen that we uh, saw in the title. Clicking on a city, it shows the information about the city. There's currently two friendly troops and two, and out of a possible five, this is basically just setting something based on how many spawn locations are there. Uh, we don't have the intel on how many enemies are present which also means that we don't know if uh, once we deploy, if there'll be hostile uh, uh, forces in the city that will trigger a battle. Uh, the plus and minus here indicate whether we've uh, allocated troops to move into or out of the city. You can see that Alpha City only is connected to Omega. The functionality to sort of wire this to arbitrary uh, cities exists, but for the tutorial, I figured to keep it easy. Right now, we don't have any movement scheduled, and this is the screen that would allow us to uh, move troops. So we, since we have two troops, we can move them to Omega City, but we don't have any troops here, so that option is no longer uh, available. And since we don't have any troops here, we know it's uncontested, even though we don't know what the enemy presence is. So we can go to the Intel shop and see the various pieces of Intel that are available for purchase. Here we can get something that will help us in a battle in Alpha City, being able to show us where the uh, enemy is deploying to. We have $20 for uh, making these purchases. And here this will give us uh, information about where the uh, enemy troops are on the campaign map. So don't have enough money for this and we can see that these have been purchased. So now uh, need to uh, press it again to refresh, but uh, we can see that there are two enemy troops here. So that means that once we deploy, a battle will commence. If we had moved our uh, troops out of the city, um, it's no longer contested because there would be two enemies here and zero of our own troops. And here we would 
this city would be contested where we would have two of our troops here and two enemy troops. But uh, the, the purpose of the tutorial is basically to have you uh, only uh, fight in the cities that you have some intel for. So I'll cancel that troop movement and this will trigger, once we deploy, this will trigger a battle in uh, Alpha City. A little more flavor. So the goal here will be to uh, prevent the enemy from capturing our command center. Uh, we'll be seeing a little deploy screen that'll allow us to place our troops. And uh, a little bit of information on how the uh, battle UI works. So here we can see that the intel that we have on the that we purchased from the farmer shows this little uh, shadow here. We can turn that on and off. Eventually I was thinking of making it so that Intel could have some probabilistic effect where it's not necessarily guaranteed to be correct and that you could cross-correlate uh, the results from different uh, sources. Uh, the other thing right now is here when we say that there are two troops in the city that's pre-allocated to a certain type of unit here a tank. Uh, eventually I could either make it so that the moving troops, you're moving specific troops between cities or that uh, the amount of troop points you get could be spent on different types of units. But once again, this is basically just to keep it simple for this uh, tutorial. So we will have to keep this uh, scout from being able to reach this base. So I'll block it in. This would allow me to clear out the troops and once they're all allocated, we can hit deploy and start the battle. So we get to go first here over on the, uh, well, on the sides, you can see information about uh, what's under the mouse cursor, whether right now, whether the tile is passable or not. And when a troop is selected, it's uh, attack and hit points. So I will select this tank and move it over here. This reveals these two uh, scouts. The blue is their movement range and the red is their attack range. Uh, I'll allow this uh, tank to stay here. Uh, you can notice that once the uh, uh, mouse goes over to the side of the screen with the uh, properties, it swipes over. Move this guy up here and attack the scout and uh, head over here to try to cut it off and catch it before it's able to get to the uh, command center. All right, victory. Uh, there is also an options menu here that allows you to uh, save and load. So the, uh, the campaign section of the code basically uh, captures all of the different conditions that make these different briefings appear. So in this case, having uh, cleared the uh, troops out of that alpha city, or when we're going back into the uh, campaign screen, we get this little uh, uh, dialogue that's different from uh, the previous one. All right, look at alpha city. We can see that there are no longer any enemy troops. We can now move our two troops over to Omega city. All right, they're scheduled to move. That'll make this uh, contested. Oh, and uh, since we uh, won that battle, we actually have additional resources. So now we can pay off a general to be able to get the troop deployment for Omega City. All right, let's uh, deploy. Now the uh, conditions have been uh, flipped so we are now controlling scouts while the enemy has tanks. This is a little bit of a UI th issue that uh, I'd probably want to uh, address as well, where this is a window, but doesn't automatically flip over. So it can potentially be blocking the screen. So you can see that the uh, general's intel is uh, hidden for the uh, unit that's over there. But uh, to be able to get through, this is actually the um, placement of the units is random. So this was actually a particularly uh, easy configuration. Probably uh, I could encode it to uh, always choose one of the uh, more uh, difficult paths, but we can just simply place one of our units in the center 
and uh, it'll have a straight shot in order to get to the uh, enemy base. All right, well, we know that the tanks aren't able to move fast enough to uh, capture our scout, so we can just move right in and uh, win the game. All right, so that's the uh, functionality that's been put in so far. Definitely a lot of uh, features about the battles and you know which units have been implemented and adding uh, more uh, tactical diversity and an actual scenario left to be done. But I think this pretty well captures the uh, core uh, interface 